Hey, I'm Dylan from Live Life Creative. I wanna teach you how to fix the white balance in your photos. Uh, maybe it looks something like this straight out of camera. I wanna help you make it look more like this. So a lot of that comes in the white balance module of Darktable. And with a few different tools within the module, you can really fix the color and give yourself a great base for editing your photo into pretty much whatever you want. So. Let's get started. So here we have a photo that I took at a wedding earlier this summer. Uh, obviously it's a little bit dark, so just so for the sake of seeing things, I'll brighten it up in the exposure module. And uh, the white balance isn't too horrible. Uh, I'm just on auto white balance here for this part of the day. Uh, but maybe this white balance could be a lot worse, you know? Uh, maybe your white balance is something more like, mm, something like that. Uh, maybe not quite that crazy. Uh, maybe it's something more like, that or you know just not exactly where you want it and you want to make it a little bit more better -er. okay so there's a couple of ways to do this uh, once you have the white balance module opened there's these line of buttons here at the bottom the camera button just uses the white balance used by your camera so if you have a preset like shade or flash or direct sunlight or something like that something that doesn't adapt to the situation like auto white balance does then your white balance could be really bad really terrible right out of the gate this next button here set white balance to detected from area so you click it now you have this box that shows up. That is the area from which it detects white balance, uh, which is what we'll be using here in a second. You can do a custom white balance with the pencil icon, which basically just means you've moved the sliders in some combination and uh, maybe you got yourself to a place you didn't want to be. And then this last one is set white balance to camera reference point. In most cases, it should be D65. Uh, this is kind of like a very technical kind of a thing. Uh, I don't really use that whatsoever. So we can ignore that last one, honestly. The tool that I want to use is the eyedropper tool here, the second one. And the best thing that you can do to get a great white balance is to select an area of the photo that is just plain white. So if you do a lot of weddings, obviously you're going to have groomsmen and grooms with white t-shirts, uh, with white dress shirts on. You're going to have the bride with a white dress on. So then it gets uh, to be pretty easy, right? You can have something like this where you can just select the eyedropper tool, click and drag over a white area, get a nice big sample there, and boom, there's your white balance. Uh, but it does matter exactly where on that white shirt that you select. Because if you look within this box that I've selected, there's some bluish tones here and here and down here. And then right here is kind of a more pure white kind of an area here. And, you know, maybe you clipped a little bit of his skin and then that might change a little bit of things or got his tie in there and that kind of changes things. So even in on a white shirt, there are a lot of different colors and tones in there uh, that can really screw you up. So what you're looking for is the most neutral, like not blue, not warm colored part of a white shirt as possible, which I think in this photo might just be the cuff of his shirt there. So if we select that, then overall, this gives us a very nice, like very balanced sort of white balance here. And it looks pretty natural. It's a little bit on the warm side. And I would say it's a little bit on the green side still. Um, in this photo, we're under this canopy of trees. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of overhead cover of leaves and things like that. So that's definitely filtering the light coming down from the sun uh, to be a lot more green. So if you get this white balance set using the eyedropper tool, but you still feel like mm, that's just not quite right, well, good news, you can, you know, adjust these sliders yourself. Uh, so in this case, I'm looking at his face. Uh, his face looks pretty green, especially this lighter area underneath his eye. That's got some green tones to it, and I'm not quite a huge fan of that. So what you can do to make very precise adjustments for the green versus magenta slider is to, you know, you can click and drag it, but if you actually right-click then you get this pop-up box here and this wavy curvy line lets you make very fine adjustments or when this box is open you can also type into it so if you do period uh, 0.5 that'll give you you know 0.95 on the slider there 
which was, you know, like 20 points lower than where I was before. So that's starting to look a little bit better. I think I want to go to 0 0.94 though. And that's a very subtle difference. Like 0 0.01 difference is very, very subtle. So that's not going to like make a huge difference, but it's one of those like 1% things. If you can just nail the white balance just perfectly, that last 1% is really going to improve your photo to a huge degree. So that's the green versus magenta part. Now we can look at the warmth or the coolness of the photo. Um, I would say it's a touch on the warm side, which is actually where I prefer it to be. But if you want your photos to be a little bit more on the cool side, and I'm primarily looking at his face for these evaluations. If you look at his shirt, his shirt's pretty blue. Uh, maybe a touch of magenta in there now that we've adjusted the magenta down with this white balance slider. Uh, so if you wanted to do a little bit cooler tone photo though, you can right click and type into it. Uh, so a smaller number would be a more cool toned photo or a larger number would be a more warm toned photo. So here we're going to go from 3900 to say 3600. And so that's, a, that's getting pretty on the cool side there. Uh, so actually I really didn't mind the 3900. I'm going to actually go up to, nope, not point. I'm gonna go up to 4,000, just cause I'm a fan of round numbers. And that's looking pretty good. So that's basically all there is to it to getting a really nice white balance there. Now that's basically all there is to it to getting a really nice white balance, but keep in mind, this is for raw photos, not for JPEGs. When you have a JPEG photo, you're not gonna be able to adjust the white balance very far with either green versus magenta or blue versus yellow, warm versus cold tones in a photo. There's a lot more that's just baked into a JPEG photo. When you have a raw photo, you can adjust the white balance endlessly, up or down. And I don't know exactly how that works on a technical level, but it's kind of magical, honestly. So if you're not shooting raw photos, if you're trying to edit a JPEG, like maybe from your phone or from you know the auto mode or your camera or something like that, then it's gonna be a lot more difficult to get the correct white balance, especially if it's very far, far off. Um, so that's today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dylan from Live Life Creative. If this video has been helpful to you, then please hit like and subscribe. That's always helpful. And I know that you hear that from every YouTuber or any YouTube video, but if I don't remind you, you probably won't do it. So I'm going to remind you and hopefully you'll do it. <laughs> Thanks so much.